Hi, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kim Jonsson. I'm the game director on Interstellar Marines here at Zero Point Software. Hi, I'm Christian Vanek. I'm producer on Interstellar Marines. This is a voice narrative version, a commentary, if you will, of uh, our GDC 08 presentation, and it serves two purposes. Uh, give a little insight to the game direction we'll be taking on Interstellar Marines, and uh, secondly, it'll showcase or highlight some of the things we've worked on with our publisher demo, our first uh, playable prototype of the game. So let's begin. Let's go. First off, we want to talk a little bit about the, the world of Interstellar Marines. Uh, you know, we want to convey uh, a realistic uh, future where mankind has colonized most of the solar system. It's everyday life to live on Mars, to live on the moon, to live on Earth, of course, and know to, to take a space bus from the moon to Mars in, in four hours, like you would do if you were going to Australia. Mm. Now, um, obviously, in, in this uh, future universe, we have this really central organization called IGO, which is basically the NATO of the future. Their military branch is uh, called the Interstellar Marines, which is a top secret military branch, basically like your, your SEALs of today or, or Delta Forces. And what we want to do with the player is to place him as a part of this uh, part of these special forces and have him experience a tour of duty through uh, the solar system. Yeah, they basically they the start off the characters and become as Navy SEALs and become part of the Interstellar Marines, which is the the, the first line defense uh, against threats like uh, you know another in alien species. But they also are uh, guarding uh, development projects in, in viral and biological uh, warfare. One of the things that ITO is working on and, and the forefront of their um, projects is, is actually the first colonization of uh, another solar system and uh, it's Project uh, Valhalla and uh, it's where the, the first contact with another alien species is taking place. We yeah. get to go there. With devastating consequences um, and obviously that's, that's uh, the, the culmination of, of the story. But the story progresses, the threats get bigger and bigger and, and at the end you come face to face with uh, another sentient species. Yeah, you smack down in the middle of it, so it all adds up to you know, establishing first contact in the first game and uh, that, that the the end of it be us uh, traveling to another solar system and back and uh, fighting the race and uh, a lot of questions uh, remains. And again, when we talk, talk first contact, we really want to you know to do to the genre, to the story, or to the vision of first contact, be as realistically as possible. And one example we come up with is, is to show how World War II movies portraying Omaha Beach uh, has done it their way and in recent times with Saving Pride Ryan have done it in, in a more, much, much more realistic way. So we want to do that to the, the sci-fi genre. Because mm. when, you, when you saw Saving Pride Ryan in the theater the first time, you were like, wow, I mean, you, you've seen this scene so many times before, you've seen Omaha Beach in so many movies, and before you go see Private Ryan, you're like, another World War II movie? Mm. but the take on it is just completely fresh and new because the way they depicted uh, yeah, uh, this horrible battle was just so realistic, so brutal, so in your face. And if we can do that to the sci-fi shooter, well, we've completed our mission. That's yeah. that's what we're out to do. And going from Earth and, and to beyond, this is, you'll endure and experience some very, very frightening situations. You'll be doing 9Gs through a planet's atmosphere and you'll be traveling in an APC towards a mission. Uh, shaking and yeah, because that's what sci-fi is about. I mean, it's uh, placing the player in some really out of this world, larger than life uh, situations that that you can't do in other genres. Yeah, we really have uh, three reference movies. We got the uh, Final Fantasy, Aliens, and Starship Troopers, and they they really showed us how how realistic sci-fi should be done. So mm. yeah. again, but still with this nitty gritty edge. Uh, mm. The realistic stuff like the things we're talking about with uh, Saving Private Ryan. Go see Cloverfield, you know what he's talking about, being realistic. So that leads us to our, our uh, prototype or our published demo and uh, we want to go into, you know, some of the details. We really believe that at, at, at bear with any game should be the, the core mechanics and we believe in, in a first person shooter like ours, it's, it's really how well you are merged into your character, how well it, it controls, how how does the weapon feel, and how does the, you using them become better and better, and the the AI, the enemies need to work. So that's the core of Instant Marines. So that's what we've been working on. So the demo here is, is less of a vertical slice and more of a, a demonstration of those three core com uh, concepts. Because mm. genre has been tainted a bit by first-person shooters being more of a first-person view and less of a first-person experience. And we want to to make it a f true first-person experience by 
integrating the HUD into the helmet as not to uh, you know make noise in the picture by yeah, having some some weird display up in in your uh, side of view. So. And immersion sources is actually looking out the eyes of your character. So that means if you're hit by bullets, if you uh, you know are attacked by a creature or some other things you experience to the character, want to do that to the character and want to you know see it through the eyes. Yeah, check this out. Now, now he's running, and you'll actually see the breath coming up on the inside of his helmet because yeah. he's uh, he's losing his breath. Now he's sprinting. It's just not speeding up the camera. It's it's totally changing the experience by shaking the camera. You feel the 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 weight of the character as you hit the ground. That that's what we want to do. That's immersion. Yeah, and that goes for for all the environment effects as well. As uh, you're standing on underwater, and you can see how the water bounces off the character, and uh, once you were inside your character, you, the the water was running down your helmet, and and all that you know helps us you know be even more more true to you know what would it be like. So that's that's interesting when we talk sci-fi. It's actually mm. saying okay. Again, this is another detail like when you get hit. It's not just a health bar counting down. You want to really get that feeling of being hit. You can see the his sight gets red. You can hear his heart pounding. Uh, he has a ringing for his ears, and uh, yeah, instead of your regular health bar on the left side, with uh, that goes from yellow to red. I mean, you need that's to get that visceral the feeling. His experience of the game so immersive that you'll doubt just where reality stopped when the game began. Because if you're really immersed to the into the character and into the story, you don't want to quit. You just want to keep playing, keep playing because. It's it's like being there yourself, mm. and it goes for uh, the interaction with uh, with the AI as well. Um, presented these shark creatures, and what as you can see, this guy really uh, going to react, all being shaken around. Again, that visceral feeling of uh, being attacked by by an enemy AI. Yeah, that leads us to the, you know the weapons of the game. We're doing this is an R SMG is one of 27 different weapons. And want to be true and know to like say okay if it were a realistic weapon the, in the future what would it feel like what would it look like and the aliens did that good with the M41A pulse rifle <laughs> yeah because because what we don't want to do is uh, make lasers or the BMG of uh, of Absolutely Doom because not. somehow you you don't you lose that contact with your weapon it it, it loses credibility uh, you can't relate to it in the same way as you can with the uh, projectile guns that's so that why. Oh, sorry, that's why many of the things we're talking about is you know doing to the sci-fi, giving the sci-fi shooter one of the the military realism for the tech from the tactical shooters, you know, being true to you doing reloads right, if the the kickback and the weapon effects, the impact effects are treated right, and that should help you merge you even more. Hmm. And if you notice here, he, he's put on a silencer, which is uh, one of the extensions that you can use for this gun. Um, you'll have uh, scopes, different uh, sort of scopes. You can change your ammo type. And basically, just uh, customize the hell out of your weapon to, uh, yeah, to get the the exact gun that you want to use to yeah. to match your personal playing style. You start the game by looking at a gigantic ITO arsenal of weapons, and you can pick from you know weapons to shotguns to sniper rifles. We're doing three of both in in good tactical shooter style, and and people can just uh, take the one they the gun type they relate to and and use that. With tactical awareness, awareness and, and potential. Mm. Yeah, a gun to fit every situation. Definitely. And just at the end here, we, we I want to talk a little bit about the character. Uh, we got light RPG elements which goes into the character. So you're doing, uh, you know, picking weapon. You're training your weapon. You become more and more uh, fit with the weapon. You get more and more fit with the character. So it's RPG elements for the character and for the weapons, and that all goes into you. Uh, being able to run longer or be more precise with the particular weapon you're training so yeah and we're really 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 missing the the opportunity of uh, you know playing cooperative in many games and that's definitely something we don't want co-op is is the one thing we believe is the is what really makes games and, and their potential even more um, so it still means it's designed from the ground up to feature four player co-op and uh, yeah, because basically you want to ho be able to hook up with your friends and uh, play the entire campaign with them from from the start to the end, but 
not just hook up online, but actually have a story that revolves around four characters or three characters. And uh, yeah, that's what we've done with Interstellar Marines. We're doing things like if a guy gets killed, um, he, he becomes deadly wounded. You're actually able to you know, drag him up or lift him up and take him out of harm's way and you do a revive and get him back on his feet. And uh, Again, with the, the mild RPGs in terms of weapons and character, you're able to you know go one down one branch with your character and knowing your friends going down other branches with theirs and that, that comes together with the good replay value and, uh, yeah, and creating the strongest team possible yeah, and I mean exactly. it's again these uh, create these situations where you you have a support gunner laying down uh, covering fire to get you out of a yeah a tricky situation you have a medic that's uh, able to heal you when you get wounded or uh, yeah basically just uh, someone uh, covering your back as uh, as you walk down a, a small aisle Oh, that guy got hit. It takes us out. Now these guys actually saved this guy's lives by uh, by shooting the shark creature that one, has attacked one him. Not <laughs> <laughs> an immersion work needed, but still, it goes to show the point. Uh, the main focus of the uh, the the demo we've we've done is less of a, a vertical slice, but also as we also as we already mentioned, and uh, our focus has been on the core concept. So what we did on with the environments was, was creating what we believe uh, is. Uh, is believable environments that you can actually relate to that that feels like that's how it would look if we build it in real life, and that's that's the approach we're taking with the the environments in the means We want it to be recreation rooms, uh, restrooms, uh, crew quarters for the personnel, and yeah. So so shortly, this, 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 the level we've done is actually you know to accommodate the show. The second level of the game is an orbital, ISO orbital research station where they are experimenting in viral viral re, uh, viruses and biological creatures, and they're taking genes from shark uh, cre uh, sharks and, and creating creatures uh, based on their gene pool. And so people are living here. They're scientists here. What they're developing is uh, is creatures for planetary warfare, and we want to convey that in the environment. One of the things we're working with is uh, simulated systems for water, for fire, for electrical systems to really give the uh, illusion that, that you're in a living and breathing world. If you shoot out a power box, you'll, a you'll be able to, uh, to turn off the lights. It, when you walk underwater, you'll have water effects on your helmet. If you push a chair into the fire, the chair will act actually c catch on fire. Yeah, and we're doing what it's a core at, at the interstellar means uh, in terms of level design is uh, is actually doing open open ended level levels so it means that you can take one way or do another based on the, your gut feeling or or how you want to go with it so we don't want a, it's not a rail shooter interstellar means it's, it's much more of you know giving presenting you with an environment that you're able to you know explore and and do the things you're sent there to do like in real life And finally, we have a little uh, little prototype demonstration here for some propri proprietary technology we're working on. Uh, it it will go a long way to show how we want to um, create a technology that would uh, that will immerse you even more into your character. Let the let the thing talk for itself. Hi guys, I'm Kristen Vanek. I'm producer on Interstellar Marines. As as Kim said, we are demonstrating our real-time voice porting system today, and uh, yeah, technology that we're really proud of. So we're looking forward to this presentation. You go ahead, Kim. Uh, let's activate the system. You can now hear that my voice is being uh, modified with some radio static. If you try talking, Christian. Yeah, now I should uh, have radio static when uh, I speak to simulate an actual radio communication instead of just your, your regular voice over IP. My voice goes into the environment and the reverb of this uh, maintenance access is actually being processed on top of the, the my voice. You try open your helmet, Christian. Now you can hear that uh, my voice is actually also present in the game world and I have the reverberation of the room influencing it so uh, it's actually changing a bit compared to before when you just heard it with the radio. And as I move away from you the sound note will become more distant and at the end just disappears so about now I should only be uh, present in your radio. Now if I really raise my voice <laughs> I can hear you nice clear. <laughs> You'll actually be able to uh, hear it in the game world because volume of my voice affects uh, the environment. Here we go again. Nice and clear. Can you hear me? Well, I can hear you. I think you should uh, move first. Good reverb here for the kind of effects. <laughs> I'll just try to uh, move out here. Shoot it through right. A few try raising voice. Hello? Hello?
Okay, try turning off your radio. Yeah, I'll try to uh, turn off my radio about now. So now you should uh, be able to hear my voice with the occlusion of the door, but uh, not with the radio. And it changes as Keep opens the door, because uh, the occlusion of the door disappears. That's it's really nice to communicate here. That's okay, the sound creature coming now. And I'm raise my voice and say, hey! Okay, that basically uh, wraps up our presentation. I'll let you have the final word, Kim. Fifteen minutes isn't that long a time when you got a, a game this ambitious, so I hope this uh, has sparked uh, your appetite and uh, contact us and let's show you even more.